Logging into apps with a password is so 2010, isn't it? Passwordless authentication has been a rapidly developing trend and offers a more secure and seamless authentication process. Poor passwords actually account for 81% of all security breaches, since over 51% of the people reuse their passwords everywhere. So eliminating passwords simply solves the problem. One of the methods for passwordless authentication is a magic link. That's when user inputs their email, the application generates a token and a unique link, which when user clicks um, is verified and the session information is saved. But what if instead of having an application or any other centralized identity provider like Google or Apple generate an auth token, have users sign a data with their private key, which generates a signature and send that as a proof uh, to the server to make the process more secure. Um, that way, server doesn't have to send the auth token and worry about if it's delivered uh, or accessed on the way. So then server afterwards will check the signature if it's valid or not. And what makes it also secure that it is impossible to derive user's private key from that signature, um, even if um, some other third party accesses it there's no way to trace it back to the private key. The concept of sending the proof instead of actual sensitive data is called zero knowledge proof. And for those interested, I'm going to explain a little bit more how it works, but if you'd like to just see the implementation, feel free to skip to the next part of the video. Let's go over this process of passwordless authentication using zero knowledge proofs and how Magic achieves it make it easier to understand. So when a user signs up, a public-private key pair is generated on the client side for the user. It's inside the JavaScript browser iframe when you integrate Magic, that's where it's stored, and it is inaccessible by the integrating app. So wherever you're in, you integrate, the app won't have access to it. And that is beneficial because this is a sensitive information, so you don't have to worry about later on um, where to store it or when to clear it. Um, and users should only have access to it. The keys are generated by a secure cryptographic function uh, and private keys, which should be kept highly secure and is used to create signatures. So user uses that to prove ownership, while the public key, as the name suggests, can be public and used by the other party to verify the signature to make sure it's actually coming from the user. After user sign up and key generation, we are at the step where we have to encrypt and store the keys. Uh, they are stored on magic auth layer and the private key is also stored on the client side. When user authenticates again, the encrypted private key is downloaded to the client and then if the authentication is not successful, then they're just locked up. Even though passwordless authentication is very convenient, still a lot of places don't have it adopted. So if you're looking for a great way to manage passwords for your business, I recommend you check out NordPass. Here, I also want to thank them for sponsoring the video. With NordPass, you can easily generate passwords, store and share company sensitive information with your team or select specific groups or individuals to share with. No more sending API keys in Slack and having to delete it afterwards or worrying about if the other party also did the same. NordPass also has a data breach scanner which helps you to check whether your sensitive information appears in a breach. You examine the strength of your passwords and it comes with other cool features. Using the link in the description of the video, you can check them out. Now let's go over to Magic's documentation and here we can see that there's two options to quick start with Magic. One is build with CLI, which will basically create a new application that has already Magic integrated in it and authentication set up. Later on, you can customize it. Or uh, if you have an existing Next.js application, you can integrate into it. Uh, let's try uh, this one. And so it's simple command npx make magic. I'm going to copy this and we'll go to the terminal. I'm only ready in the folder when I, where I want to uh, create my project. So I'm going to paste uh, the command and this will ask us um, first to install this package if we don't already have it. 
And once it is installed, let's um, give it a name. So I'm going to go with the awesome magic test app, which is a suggestion. And um, so there is like a default configuration, which is Next.js and set of wallet selected uh, and email one time password. And you can also do custom setup, but I'm going to go with the pre-selected configurations. And the next step would be that we need to get API key from mm, dashboard magic link. So let's copy here. So let's sign up. And besides the authentication, it does come with other features, but we can get into them later. Agree. And once we are in the dashboard, we're going to, going to create a new app and select dedicated wallet version. I think the universal one is more like a plug and play. And app name, let's do just testing, create app. This also gives us um, comments on how to set up. I am going to copy. It's asking us a publishable API key. So that's our public um, API key. I added my key, it added a few packages and automatically started the server on localhost 3000. So let's um, copy and test it out. So it's running here. Here we have the email input where we can um, sign up or log in. So it would be the same form for both of them. For signing up, signing up it will first check if the user exists, if not, uh, regardless, in both cases, we send a new email. So let's try. All right, now we're logged in. We have a few links at the top. This is wallet, which as user gets created, but user doesn't have to manage it. So we can like disregard this part. Other features I mentioned, one of them is sending transactions, which can happen. Um, and here's some part of the documentation for other methods that are available to us. For example, update uh, email so user can change their email address. Um, they can also access their ID token, uh, which uh, serves as a proof that I mentioned before, also get information about the user and this disconnect will be similar to a logout in traditional uh, applications. Now let's examine the code that have the project open here in VS Code and I'm going to go to source folder. We have component pages, tiles and this utils for the functions. And if we go to pages and app.tsx, we are actually index.tsx, that's the main page. The application is wrapped in magic provider. And what this does is that it provides the functions for magic. So it first um, initiates if we, if we have API key is set and it's available. And the API key is coming from that env file. When we created the app, it was uh, set using the command line. Um, and uh, so it passes that and creates and it sets it, saves it in this magic state. So two things are saved, magic and web3. And then we can access these functions and values from inside uh, the components that go into this provider, for example, if we have a login, we have this uh, email one time password um, component defined here that, and the function that handles login. We have also states for email if there's any errors um, and initializing magic is the first. Once we check the format is correct, we call this auth function and set the token that we receive uh, from the function and then there's like some error handling here and finally we have this car component with input so it would be with input there's a space for showing the errors and then there's a button either for login and sign up email one time password where as we saw when user puts in an email address of theirs they get this code which serves as only one time password 
But now let's implement the uh, magic link itself, where instead user gets a unique link and they click on it. And here we'll be using a login with magic link. And this is like the sample code. We still have to initiate magic. And instead of, uh, for example, here we had, a, what is it? Login with email OTP, we would use login with magic link. So let's try that out and we can create a new component. I'm gonna copy this new file. Uh, yeah, let's first change the name of the component as well as the header. So we still need to check, uh, so email field, we need that, uh, magic authentication, we'll need that, as well as error and um, handle login function. And we're gonna replace this with a magic link. It still takes uh, object with the field email, so we would pass that. And let's see for the token, if it returns token, so error handling, a magic link expired, rate limited, logged in. Okay, so we have the same magic error handling as for a one time password. And that should be it. Let's copy this component in the login of file. So import magic link. And we also take in token. So this is in case user is already logged in. We uh, pass the token and also uh, ma this one has a set token function that we pass in here and once the token is returned from our auth layer then we um, set it to know that on client side user is logged in. Now I'm going to go back to localhost and so this function so if we click that will get disconnected that's my magic link let me Put in the password, log in. Okay, so it sent me and let's press that. Login is complete, so it verified and it should have stored. If we go here, we're gonna see that our dashboard got reloaded and we are now logged into the application successfully. In this video, we discussed passwordless authentication, specifically the magic link and went over the underlying concepts. We also looked into how to implement it using magic. There are other providers that do have this type of authentication, like Firebase and Superbase, for example, uh, but the concepts they're using are a little bit different compared to zero trust philosophy that Magic follows. And that concept is widely used more in Web3 apps, also, although Web2 apps can also use it perfectly. Additionally, Magic SDK comes with other features. You can easily implement transactions, um, check out, and if this concepts Caught your eye, I will link their white paper also down below so you can learn more about uh, how they implement their authentication, how they use zero knowledge proofs. I met their team in East Denver this year and was definitely fascinated so decided to share with you guys. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more Web3 content and I'll see you in the next video.